This episode is powered by Safety FM. This week's episode, we're going to learn about some tips for when you're doing public speaking. Do you want to be a safety consultant? Listen to Dr. Jay Allen of Safety FM give his experience after taking the Safety Consultant Blueprint course. I have actually done research on different consultants and looked at different consulting courses and so on. There is a pretty fancy, very expensive consulting course that is out there. I have actually purchased the consulting course, was interested in it. It has good information. Don't get me wrong. But you have a consulting course that really drives people onto focusing on safety and how to become a safety consultant. I will tell you on your particular course, there was better information in that particular regards than the other consulting course that was more of a generalist form. But I figured I felt like I got more information out of yours on you giving people direct path on what to do step by step. But I really think that you have a genuine good product there that can really assist people if they're interested in becoming a safety consultant. Register for the Safety Consultant Blueprint at www.safetyconsultantblueprint.com. Enter code PODCAST for a special discount. Welcome back. Well, in this week's episode, uh, we're going to go over speaking tips. So I've got 10 speaking tips that I really want to uh, make you aware of, things that I've used before, things that I have heard work for other people. But generally, it's going to be uh, these 10 that I believe uh, will, will help you right now in your next speaking engagement. So before we get into that, I want to let you know of a huge summer sale that I'm doing for the Safety Consultant Blueprint course. So you go to safetyconsultantblueprint.com and the course is normally $1,150, which is $1,000, $150. Uh, now it's going to be for $600 for the summer. So going to reduce that price for the summer, make the barrier to entry lower so that you can get your business started. And if you pay in full at first, you do have the option of doing a a broken down payment and I believe it's three or four payments uh, for the course or you could do it all at once if you do it all at once you can save an additional $75 and then if you use the code podcast uh, at time of purchase you'll get an additional discount and that should bring the course down to $446 in like 25 cents or something like that if uh, my math is right. But anyway, that's a big reduction. It's only for the summer. And I believe there's a limited amount. I, I can't remember what the the actual number of uh, courses they are yet. So I just want to get you to check that out. Go to safetyconsultantblueprint.com and you can see the course and go ahead and purchase it before it goes back to its regular rate it's in uh, fall. All right. Let's talk a little bit about some of these speaking tips. Before we go any further, I actually have to do this in my hotel room in uh, Indiana. That's where I am right now, Evansville, Indiana. So I'm doing a podcast in my hotel room, so I can't really say what kind of sound quality you have. All right. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Tip number one. Don't forget to breathe. It's very simple, right? You gotta breathe. So, (sighs) tip number one, breathe. It's very important. It regulates a lot. It helps you with your pausing. So as you're breathing, that is going to be a natural reset. It'll help you with your arms. So, there's a lot of times I notice that I get into a routine of some quirk, arms, you know, whatever it is. So I have to consciously think about putting in that little pause and the pause is a natural great place to take a breath. So that's what I do. It's good to breathe, right? (laughs) So tip number two, speak from your diaphragm. If you've ever done any drama 
classes or if you've done anything in singing, then you know that those singers, they'll put their uh, hand right on the bottom of the stomach area and kind of push down to get really strong, forceful notes. They're on their diaphragm over there and they're I guess it's just below the stomach. That's uh, all I've ever seen. I've never actually looked at it in uh, any kind of physiological sense, but I'm, I'm thinking it's there because that's where everybody pushes. And so that actually gives you a stronger voice. So you're not speaking through uh, more of their throaty voice and they'll save your voice, help you project it. And you don't lose your voice so often. So if you're breathing and speaking from your diaphragm, you're going to kind of feel a tightening in your abs as the, you're delivering the words. And that means you're, you're speaking in the right area. You'll even uh, you'll hear a drop in your tone uh, just for doing that practice, too. So it does help, especially if you're speaking for a long time. You, you don't want to lose your voice. So it definitely helps. All right. Tip number three. I'm running through these. But tip number three is going to be don't walk too much. I've seen some people who uh, who walk a lot and uh, they're used to the PowerPoint or whatever projector you know, the keypad that you could advance and go backwards and they got the little light on it. A lot of people use that little light uh, as they're walking back and forth and making notes on this, their screen or the projector. That's a little distracting, so you don't want to be too much movement. So you, you must move time to time. If you're stuck at the podium, I call that the kiss of death. You you can't be stuck behind a podium. That's, that's terrible. But if you're moving, you don't want to pace back and forth, back and forth and make a rut in the carpet in a pattern usually if you're doing the walking you know use the room and walk up front uh towards the the students in the audience uh walk between them go back towards the front to walk side to stop talk a little walk to the other side stop you know so don't make it like like a, a nervous motion make your walks and your movement meaningful purposeful and that actually will be a little bit better for your presentation so don't walk too much but you know use it as part of your tools to keep people's attention uh, keep your hands out of your pockets or too long you know it's it's comfortable comfortable to do it's a it's actually a protective posture so you get your hands in your pocket and you're talking. So yes, sometimes, you know, that's part of your arsenal. You could use that, you know, but use it again purposely. And uh, you could take your hands out of your pockets, use them for uh, for dialogue and to speak. Not uh, where you're constantly moving your hands in front of people's face as speaking with your hands every single word. But for emphasis purpose or contrast or something like that, you could uh, say this versus that and point one way versus the other way. You know, so you could get people to, to visually know exactly what you're thinking about or he's over here and you could use your hand to gesture something. And that's the, a good way to, to use your hands as opposed to... Um, you know, put them in your pocket too long. Let's see, get, get them out your pocket. Get some help over there. All right. Number five is use some power moves and statements. So every once in a while, you may have to, um, I'm not saying Superman pose. That's a, a little bit different, <laughs> even though that does count as a power pose. But there are some poses that uh, will tend to be thought of as someone who is in charge you know the folded hands with holding the chin or maybe even the open posture per se but in the hands to the side is very very in charge type of look and then there's people that use the desk you know they have an open palm uh, facing the bottom of the table and they lean in 
Uh, so that projects uh, some authority as well. So you just have to look into some body language, psychology, kind of to help you out. You want to take every means necessary for you to get your message conveyed, and even your body language when you're using that again purposely. Uh, that does help. The next one is let the audience participate. So you want to make sure that from time to time you're going to include your audience. Tell you stories about themselves to、uh, interject things. Yeah, that's okay. Just don't let it get out of hand. You'll have to control your talkers, and you'll find them right away. <laughs> so I have to make sure that they value everyone else's time because people came to hear you and not them. So yes, that's definitely one of the things that we'll have to monitor. But、uh, it's good to incorporate people too because. Everyone loves talking about themselves, so therefore,、uh, might as well give them an opportunity, and it breaks up the the nuances of the course as well. So it does help. Next tip is to prepare ahead of time. It is so different when you actually see a prepared presentation where. Wonderful when you could even time it. I've never had that、uh, discipline to time a presentation and start to finish and have it just run out. That's awesome if you could do that. But you want to make sure that you are completely prepared with the material, so you don't have to keep going back and forth to the source material, or even worse, miss in some of the source material. You want to make sure you understand that very well, so the slides aren't really for you; they're for your audience. It's incredibly boring for someone to read every word and every slide. So, therefore, if you know the material, it's going to help you where you don't have that that happening. So, you know, that's a simple tip, but it's going to actually add to your confidence. So when you get really confident about your speaking, it's chances are is you know the material and it's been internalized. So once that material becomes internalized stuff that you know, then hey, that's exactly what you want. You could run it off the cuff as opposed to always having to look at the presentation or you know PowerPoint whatever you're using behind you. And then if you know the material, you could.、Uh, Do something like move away from the presentation. Work on a dry erase board. Draw out a few examples or something to that、uh, degree. Have a little Q and A, mini Q and A, if you want to change from one thought to the next, depending on you know the type of class it is. And that's all of the things you could do. Just you know making sure that you can. Uh, get everyone to participate, and you're prepared. So once you're prepared,、uh, you'll be able to really work the class to something that is better than just you know straight information. Next tip is to imagine that you're talking with your friends just around a meal or just hanging out. As opposed to you always have to deliver the information word by word, step by step, line by line. That is going to be a boring presentation. <laughs> But if you are to present it as to I'm going to share my information, I'm going to receive information from the crowd. I'm going to be listening and opening and dynamic as to if I hear someone's talk, maybe it's not even directed, and it could be that. Every once in a while, you get the side chatter or something, and you pick up on on something, and now you could adapt the、uh, lesson, the training, whatever, to a specific comment. You know that might help you too. But、uh, the atmosphere of friendship and thinking of everyone as you know just hanging out together is going to take the pressure off of you, even though you're the the professional, even though you are. The expert, it doesn't come off that way, so it's a little bit more endearing. So uh, definitely uh, try to think of everyone hanging out together. Number nine: wear comfortable clothing and shoes, especially shoes. 
I have uh, added some of those gel insoles in my shoes because I do eight hour classes, 40 hour weeks. That really, really plays a, a big part on your, your feet. So you'll come back and, you know, sometimes I'll just flop in the bed or on the couch or something at the Airbnb when I come back because my feet hurt so bad. And so truly, you're going to have to invest in some good footwear and whatever comfort soles you can put in and buy to help uh, the manufactured um, soles. Go ahead and do that. You, you want to get that in there. Uh, arch support, anything like that that's going to help your feet feel really comfortable. That's what you're going for. So it's a practical tip, but it does really help. And number 10, you got to control the room from distractions and from people that are going to dominate your conversation. So uh, one of the things that you're going to do is, yes, give them the time to speak, because if you're always uh, squashing their desire to speak, then eventually they're going to just keep going to the point that a constant interruption where they feel like they have to get something out or else they're going to burst. I've seen that too. So what we do for me is I let it do like a little drip and a drab and I direct the questions. Well, Peter, Mary, Susan, John, what do you think about this? And I'll let them get it out. And I'm doing that with everyone too. I just don't consciously try to keep them from talking I just make sure that I'm, I'm monitoring that and then when it's time to get the mic back if you will yeah. then I just go ahead and you know uh, say hey thank you I appreciate that and uh, grab control back but you still got to make sure that you're um, you're controlling your room and that's you know that's the the verbal distraction sometimes it's distractions with phones and people going in and out of the room or things like that so i do control my room in that way saying all right no phones uh, laptops can't uh have that for the most part because they're not going to be listening to you they're going to be doing uh work while they're supposed to be listening and then the other thing that i um i i i, I make it pretty much every every class and i tell them if you need to just stand up you know just go ahead and stand up and relax as far as knowing that it's okay to sit stand sit stand if you want to pace the back as long as it's not crazy i'm okay too and uh no distractions so it makes the classroom itself an easier classroom so that's a, another thing that i do with just to help because when people get fidgety then that becomes a distraction as well so that's what i i think about all right so that is all our topics for the week went through my speaking tips i'm sure there's more and probably something else will pop up in my head later but uh that'll at least get you started and then add your own tips too right so again i want to thank you for listening to this podcast if you can i'd love to see an itunes review so that would be wonderful let me know what you think and i will i'll uh, just I can't send it like a message back. I wish if I could, <laughs> but I, I will start doing my iTunes review of the week. Do you want to be a safety consultant? Listen to Dr. J. Allen of Safety FM. Give his experience after taking the Safety Consultant Blueprint course. But I really think that you have a genuine good product there that can really assist people if they're interested in becoming a safety consultant. Register for the Safety Consultant Blueprint at www.safetyconsultantblueprint.com. Enter code PODCAST for a special discount. The tip of the week is to record yourself while you are doing a presentation, play back the recording, and then just review everything that you have done. Listen to yourself, listen to your nuances, listen to your breathing pattern, anything that it is, so that you can now be aware of how you are speaking, how it is becoming presented to people. Record it both audio and video for even more 
the information. Audio recording is good because definitely you want to be able to hear yourself and you want to be able to make sure that you can catch your ums and your ahs and everything there. And that will change too. Sometimes you will have a phrase that you would keep saying now that you haven't said before. So when you start recording yourself, then you could really tell exactly where you stand as far as nuances and quirks. When you see yourself, then you can also see some of your quirks. See if you have a, a tendency to cross your hands uh, above your chest or if you hold your hands to the side. You'll be able to see that. Uh, you can tell if you're a, a walker, if you walk from place to place, side to side. That's going to be the benefit of recording yourself. I've used this tool before in a class. I've uh, given people my phone and said, hey, can you record this session for me so that I can see and critique myself? So next time when I do this presentation, I know exactly what I need to do. Uh, what parts I'm going to emphasize and everything else related to that. So the tip of the week is to make sure that you are going to record yourself, listen to yourself, watch yourself, and that's going to help you in the long run so that you can know your quirks and get better. And that's the key, right? You want to get better as a speaker. So that is the tip of the week. Thank you again for uh, spending some time for me. I want to uh, tell you that in the next coming months, you can catch me on the road. If you're going to be in Daytona, Florida in August, I have a one-day seminar with Dr. Jay Allen from Safety FM. We're going to do a one-day event in Daytona in August. So you want to go to safety, excuse me, neosti.org backslash safety fm so that's n-e-o-s-t-i dot org backslash safety fm and then you can register for that one day daytona class in september i'm going to be in denver colorado teaching a week-long class also with dr j allen so it's the safety fm road trip there and we're going to have two days of osha compliance through the eyes of a safety consultant myself and then the following two days will be uh, Dr. J doing the human organization performance hop. And he's going to give you an introduction to hop, the foundations of hop, as well as do a nice little uh, round table talk on uh, that. And then on Friday, we're going to do a general round table on safety and help all together. So the participants or you could just come in for the round table. We're going to talk about how safety compliance and safety culture must meet. And it shouldn't be an either or scenario, but they should be working in compliance and in conjunction with each other. So we'll have a round table discussion about something specifically brought up in uh, sessions earlier in the week, or uh, if it's someone that just wants to come out for the one day event and want to participate in that round table, You'll have your questions answered during that time. And to register, you want to go to miasti.org backslash safety FM. And there's a registration area there for the Denver class. So you can see Denver, Colorado in September or uh, Daytona Beach, Florida in August. So I will see you guys next week. This podcast is being sponsored by safetyconsultantblueprint.com. This episode has been powered by Safety FM.